Christianity is the largest religion in the world. The faith is currently followed by over 2 billion people, from the United States to even some of the world's strictest dictatorships, such as North Korea. Originating in the Middle Eastern region of Judea, Christianity today is often associated with the Western world, despite being a global faith with a foundation in the Mideast. Nevertheless, this may be in view of the fact of the inability for Christianity to take flight as well in further East areas, such as Asia, than in the West. From its center point in Judea, Christianity began its early spread through the surrounding countries of the Levant, what we know now as Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, and Cyprus. This led to the rollout into the Asian continent of Christianity as Antioch became a new home base for the faith after its evangelization allegedly by Peter the Apostle himself, as well as Paul and Barnabas. Apostles Thaddeus and Bartholomew and Simon and Andrew further evangelized Armenia and Georgia respectively, as the span of the budding religion stretched further to the Eastern world, passing additionally through Mesopotamia and Parthia, and allegedly India as well, on its way to the Far East. The belief is that throughout these early centuries, Nestorian Christians eventually moved from the lands of modern-day Iraq into China, with the earliest known evidence of such contact coming from the age of the Tang Dynasty between the 7th and 10th centuries. The early Christian mission in China is thus known to have been established by a priest by the name of Alopen in 635 AD, welcomed by the emperor himself in spite of pushback from the local Buddhists and Taoists. The growth of Christianity in China would surge at first, but then hit a stall under the later, less accepting imperial rulers. Efforts to evangelize would pick up again during the Mongol period, as its leaders tended to be more religiously tolerant, and the prodigious Kublai Khan and many of his relatives had even married a Nestorian woman. The Christian faith was not only tolerated but now welcomed under Mongol rule, and when Catholics attempted to convert the Mongols centuries later, they were amazed to find that Christianity had already reached them. Still, in response to a request for aid in solidifying the Chinese Yuan dynasty, Pope Nicholas IV sent John of Monte Corvino, a Franciscan missionary, to the Mongol court John was passionate about solidifying and expanding the Christian faith in the Chinese territories, and even went so far as learning the Mongolian language in order to translate parts of the Bible for the locals. His work led to further expansion of Christianity in the region, and even some converts shifting from Eastern Nestorian to Western Catholic Christianity. With the death of the Yuan dynasty in China, however, came the death of the evangelism in the region as the Ming dynasty took over and quickly expressed their intolerance. Christianity in China would not disappear entirely, though, and its existence and growth would continue to ebb and flow over the centuries to come. Today, China is home to an estimated 20 million Christian adults, or roughly 2% of the population, as of 2018. It's a large number, but nothing compared to the over 60% of America's population being of the Christian faith. China, of course, was far from the only Far East country to be reached by Christianity. In Taiwan, Many English and Canadian Presbyterians had brought their religion to the island with notable success. When mainland Chinese residents soon made their way to the Taiwanese island after the mainland's communist takeover, Christianity multiplied. Today, the Christians of the island make up around 3% of the population, which is still small compared to Western nations, but considerable nonetheless. Japan took to Christianity better at the start, 
and yet much worse now in the present day. Christians in modern-day Japan account for only around 1% of the contemporary population, notwithstanding the masses of converts centuries prior when Christianity first reached Japanese lands. The 17th century marks the beginning of the end of this era of success for the faith, known as the Christian century in Japan. Some faithful did remain, and when Christian missionaries were eventually allowed to return hundreds of years later, they would discover this fact. Other Asian nations, such as North Korea, furthermore house what one could describe as undercover Christians, thanks to evangelism in the 1800s by many American Protestants. These early Korean Christians quickly became passionate and motivated on their own to continue and share their newfound faith. Modern-day South Korea houses some of the world's largest Christian churches as a result, and a large number of missionaries of their own are now being sent abroad. Nearly 30% of South Korea's population considers themselves Christian today, and even under the rigid totalitarian regime of North Korea, it's believed that feasibly around 1%, the same as Japan, of the people follow the Christian faith. The largest Christian population within any Eastern Asian country can be found in the Philippines, which is home to a particularly large Catholic community thanks to colonization by Spain over a span of almost 400 years. Protestants did make their way to the Philippines as well under the later dominion of the Americans, with many missionaries attempting to convert those that the Catholics had failed to. Today, a stunning 78% to 90% of the population, depending on who you ask, label themselves as Christian. That accounts for over 85 million people. This remarkable success by the Christian missionaries can be attributed to the overwhelming aid they received from the presence of Catholic Spaniards followed by Protestant Americans during the colonial era. Furthermore, with no widespread centralized religion to contest with the newly introduced faith, the Philippines was essentially an open door, just waiting for the Christians to enter and spread the word. Other Asian nations such as Thailand, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Cambodia, Vietnam, and even India house small yet important Christian populations as well principally as a result of limited missionary evangelism and, in the case of Vietnam, communist ideology supremacy in more recent history. Another vastly significant reason why Christianity failed to surge in these countries can be attributed to the existence of competing religions, such as Islam, Buddhism, and Hinduism. This last factor may be the most prominent reason why Christianity failed to spread as rapidly or as widely in the Far East as it had out West. Even if some of the Asian nations had received more Christian missionaries and maybe a more united front between Nestorian, Catholic, and Protestant evangelists, it likely would have made less of a difference than the absence of a strongly solidified local religion to stand in its way. Attempting to convert Buddhists to Christianity was particularly difficult, and thus those countries such as Thailand, which were strongly Buddhist, tended to resist the acts of missionaries even more. Most of the Christians within these nations were immigrants or otherwise, not local Buddhist converts, although some, of course, did exist. Additionally, some of these more Buddhist nations, like Sri Lanka, were home to other faiths, such as Hinduism and Islam. Islam is another faith that, historically, has held up exceptionally well against the push of outside ideals, and it is Islam that even today stands as the most followed religion across all of Asia. Just behind Islam is not Buddhism, but Hinduism, another creed that, in the case of India, was a particular roadblock for Christian evangelists. 
other factors as to why Christianity struggled in Asia might include the facts that the Roman Empire controlled the Middle East at the time of the faith's origin, making it far more likely that the religion would spread more west than east. Or maybe the fact that, considering the placement of such Christian empires as opposed to that of large Islamic empires, there was a general position of Christians to the west and Muslims to the east throughout much of history, thus contributing to the prevalent lack of Christian conquest in the Far East. Adding to that idea would furthermore be the concept that religions often spread through conquest and colonization both of which were easier to do closer to the home bases of the Christian nations as opposed to making long journeys away from home with their military forces. And still, some suggest that there may have been another important reason. Eastern culture. The idea of guiding principles and a more philosophical approach to life tended to permeate Eastern cultures, which meant that the idea of religions like Christianity or even Islam would have been rather foreign and counterintuitive. Although, the eventual massive success of Islam seems to show the willingness of Eastern Asians to adapt to such an idea when more exposure and an early introduction existed. Thus, while there is not one reason why Christianity in Asia fails to take a stronghold throughout the majority of nations, there was a few factors that can be pointed to. The potent presence of Islam, the pre-existing ideas of Buddhism and other Far East belief systems, and the limited exposure to the Christian world. Today, Christianity is the world's largest religion. But in Asia, especially the farther east you go, it remains a prevailing minority.